Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to continue to look at our idea of discrete probability, and we're going to introduce what's called an inverse probability problem. And so uh, I will have a couple of, or actually a few videos on this. This is the first one we're introducing this idea. So remember, we have done many, uh, at this point, probability calculations. And particularly, we've done these for several different standard distributions, including using the built-in CDF functions for the geometric and binomial distributions. And we program, programmed in our own CDF functions, uh, basically for our programs, either one, for a hypergeometric distribution. So in these problems, we're given a range of values of the random variable and we computed the probability. For example, we might we have done probability problems of this type. If a uh, probability of x is less than or equal to a equals p, and we know the a value, then we can find the probability value p. But what if we want to reverse that problem? I'm going to call that an inverse probability calculation because it's the inverse uh, uh, operation or the inverse procedure. So often we're interested in an inverse probability calculation as well. So in other words, if we're given the cumulative probability, can we return the corresponding value of the random variable? In other words, if the probability of x is less than or equal to a equals p, and we know p, we want to find the value of a. So up here in a regular probability, we have a cumulative probability like this statement where we know the value of a, we want to find p. We want to be able to reverse that now so that when we know P, we can find A. So once again, that inverse probability, cumulative probability problem that we're going to be dealing with in this video in this section here is if the probability of our random variable X is less than or equal to A and that equals some known value P, can we find the value of A? So this is equivalent to finding the value of the random variable when the cumulative probability is exactly P. In other words, uh, CDF of A equals P, we know P, find A. Now, since the probability is coming in discrete chunks with a discrete probability function, such a value may not exist. In other words, there may not be a value A which the cumulative probability is exactly P. But what we could usually do is find the X value or the A value where the cumulative probability first equals or exceeds P. And that's generally what we're going to be looking at. Or maybe we want the first one right before it exceeds P. So either way, we can maybe look at that situation. So one way we could do this is to generate uh, maybe a complete CDF table in the case of a finite distribution. And then search the table, just kind of move up and down the table until we found the desired value. Or we could perform some sort of trial and error type of search, just guessing and checking probabilities of certain a values until we found the desired uh, x value of A that we were looking for. But it would be much better if we had a formula or procedure for this. Now unfortunately such a function rarely exists and the programs are not programmed into calculators for the standard discrete distributions, but we're going to figure out a workaround for that. So let's look at an example to see what we can do here. So the following is a portion of a table for a CDF for a particular distribution, a cumulative density function. And of course, these are the, the, the X values are given on the left and the CDF values of the corresponding X's are given on the right. And those CDF values, remember, are the probability that X is less than or equal to the given value in the left column. So for example, uh, here we have x equals 14, and the CDF of x is the probability that x is less than or equal to 14 is given there at least approximately to four decimal places. Okay, so here's the question. When does the cumulative probability first exceed 10%? In other words, we want the smallest value of a so that the probability of a is less, probably that x is less than or equal to a is greater than 10%. Now, of course, we put a really big X in there. Uh, in fact, if you put the, the, the biggest possible X, the probability uh, will be 1, which will certainly exceed 0.1. But we want the smallest the first time it goes over 10%. Okay. 
Okay, see if you can answer that question. Well, if you look, the first time we get a value here where the cumulative probability goes over 10% is 16. So the A value we're working for is 16 there. At 15, we have, we're have we less than 10%. At 16, we're greater than 10%. So the A value we're looking for is 16. Now, almost the same problem, but slightly different, is what is the highest value of X, which has a cumulative probability of less than 10%. So in other words, this one is we want the largest value of A, so that the probability that X is less than or equal to A is less than 10%. So the biggest X that we can get that doesn't go over 10%, and there, I think you can see that that's going to be 15 in this case. Okay, so uh, the A, oh, I'm, let's see, it says A is 14. It shouldn't be that. It should be A is uh, 15. Okay, now I think all this is correct. Uh, so A is 16 is the one we want here. If we did the probability that X is less than or equal to 15, that's the CDF of 15, it's 0 0.0432, that's less than 0.1, but when we do X is greater than or less than or equal to 16 and do its probability, that's the CDF of 16, which is 0 0.1330, which is greater than 0.1 or 10%, and that sees, we see that 16 is the one we want, whereas if we want the largest one that doesn't exceed, then we would do 15 for essentially the same reasons you see up here. 15 has a probability Cumulative probability less than 0.1, but 16 is too big because it exceeds that. And so we could answer these questions if we just had the right portion of the CDF table to look at. Okay? And so what we would like to do is to be able to generate sort of the right portion of the CDF table to get, you know, the important part here was the 15 and the 16 and those two probabilities. So the probability that X is less than or equal to 16 is actually not 10%, it's actually a little bit bigger than 10%, about 13.3%. And the probability that X is less than or equal to 15 is less than 10%, about 4.3%. But it'd be nice to have at least those two lines of the table and a couple more on either side wouldn't hurt. But we could have, we look at those uh, important parts of that CDF table. So what we'd like to do is to, to get that part of the table without having to say generate the whole table or just sort of guess and check until we found the one we're looking for. So what we're going to do next couple of videos is we're going to show you how to program either your TI-84 or your TI-Inspire calculator with inverse probability programs or functions for the three standard distributions that we've been dealing with uh, that are discrete distributions, that's geometric, binomial and hypergeometric distributions. And what these programs will do will generate the relevant portions of a CDF table, kind of like that table we saw in the previous slide. And then from there, you can answer your question whether you want the one where it just exceeds it or one right before it exceeds it, uh, depending on what you need for the context of your problem. Okay? So come back in the next video or a few videos, actually it's going to be six videos, we'll do the TI-Inspire inverse geometric, the TI-Inspire inverse binomial, and the TI-Inspire inverse hypergeometric, each have their own video, and then we'll do the three programs for the TI-84, each having their own video. And then we'll come back after that and do a, a video where we uh, put some of these to work in real world problems.